Roadkill Extra appears every single weekday at Motor Trend On Demand. It's a show that gives you question and answer sessions, deeper looks into our project vehicles, behind the scenes stuff, and here's a sample right now of one of the shows that you missed last week on MotorTrendOnDemand.com. Okay, it's time again for Freiburger Fun with Math, and you know what? I cannot be trusted with this whatsoever. This is for your entertainment only. Actually, I think I'm gonna get it right. What I'm gonna show you how to do this time is calculate what your engine RPM will be at a given mile an hour anytime you make changes with an overdrive transmission or a different rear axle ratio or a different tire height. Here is your formula. RPM is going to be the mile per hour times the gear ratio times 336 and divide all of that by your tire diameter. So this is a formula that I use all the time when I'm picking a rear axle ratio for either a drag car or a Bonneville car. And here's what I'll do. Let's take the case of the Crusher Camaro where I knew the horsepower and the weight of the car. I assumed in the quarter mile that it was going to run 125 miles an hour. Just an educated guess. Turned out to be correct. It ran 124 and a half. Um, and then I thought, well, it probably wants a 457 to one rear gear ratio. Then I've got my constant of 336, and I'm going to divide all of that by the tire diameter of 29 inches. So 125 miles per hour times a 4.57 gear ratio times 336, and then divide all of that by the tire diameter of 29. It tells me that my RPM is 6,618. Now, if you're dealing with a car that has an automatic transmission with a torque converter and it doesn't have a lockup converter, you generally need to add a little bit for torque converter slippage, depending on whether that's cruise or if it's drag racing, it can be three to 12%, three being excellent, 12 being really bad. Now, you can see that with this formula, you can go in and change the mile an hour number. Like if you want to cruise on the highway, you can decide, basically I want to cruise at 3000 RPM, how, you know, how much, how fast am I gonna be able to go at that engine speed? Or you can change your rear axle ratio or you can change your tire diameter and come up with a new RPM. Now here's the other thing. The gear ratio right here doesn't have to just be the axle ratio. For example, let's say I've got this same setup and I'm gonna add a gear vendor's overdrive, which is a 0.78 to one overdrive. So I'll do 125 miles an hour times 457 times that 0.78 ratio times 336 and then divide all of that out and we will find how much it will drop. So 125 times the 457 rear end ratio times the 0.78 gear vendors ratio times 336 divided by the tire diameter. You can see that the RPM dropped to 5162. Now here's the other thing you can do if you've got overdrive. Let's look at my non-overdrive number of 6618. If I add an overdrive of 0.78 to one, I can just multiply that RPM times 0.78, and you can see that I come up with very close to the same number. It's off a little bit, but you can also do that if you're adding overdrive. So that's how I do it. That's how I figured out to put 457s in the back of the Crusher Camaro. That's how I figured out one time that we actually ran a 2.18 to one gear ratio in the back of our Bonneville car. That's really, really high. Oh, you know what? Speaking of high and low, let me give you that education. I think I've done this once before on uh, Roadkill Extra, but it always bears repeating. With uh, gear ratios, let's say a 410 is lower than a 373, even though the number is higher. Lower gear ratio has a higher number. Higher gear ratio has a lower number. And speaking of that, let's go back to this formula. Anytime your mile per hour is slower, your RPM is reduced. Anytime your rear axle ratio is higher, once again, meaning a lower number, that reduces RPM. And conversely, a lower gear ratio, which is a higher number, will raise your RPM. Um, overdrive, obviously, the lower this number, like for example, if it was a six speed, 
and had a 0.5 to 1 overdrive. That is going to lower your RPM at cruise much more than a 0.78. And on tire diameter, the taller the tire, the lower your RPM. The shorter the tire, the higher RPM. So that's how that all works. And now I've got to get back to work putting that engine in this Cougar because we are way behind on this particular episode of Roadkill Garage. See you next time on Roadkill Extra. Steve, time to work. If you need more Roadkill Extra, go sign up right now.